Yeah, by the way, um, when we were doing rehearsal, Tom saw Scott Hendricks in his video and said, next year, I want a video, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Envy, powerful emotion, right? Um, but I have no doubt that he's going to do so many impressive things with these solutions that we're going to want to create a lot of videos. And so I, I talked about the partnership. We, we had a nice little chat. We're going to work together. And we have three things that we want to work with all of you on. And this is going to be our focus. Go-to-market strategy, right? Sounds complicated. You throw the word strategy in and suddenly everything you know, gets complicated. It's really simple. We see three core elements. So the first one is brand strategy. As I've mentioned before, it's critical that your brand strategy is aligned to your purpose. So all the things that we heard about sustainability from Tom, that's got to be front and center. It's not on some web page hidden on your website. When people see you and they say, well, who is this organization? Your purpose has to come through. The second is the offering strategy, and that's got to align to your customers' needs. The worst thing you can do is you put an offer in front of someone and it talks about yourself. I have a gig, I have fiber. You want to make sure that the offering speaks to the needs of the buyer. And the third one is your campaign strategy. You want to make sure that your campaign strategy gets you in front of people where they live, digital, social, et cetera. People are going to be able to go and find you. You're going to be able to find them. But you have to have a campaign strategy where you're doing that through things like your mobile app every single day. So last year, we spent a long time on brand strategy. I mentioned it yesterday, right? Liquid death, right? Again, a water company, right? What's more of a commodity than water? And they built an incredibly successful business because they tied their brand to their purpose, death to plastic. And they did it in an amazing, amazing way. And by the way, what was really interesting last year was how many people sent me pictures when they were in stores for Halloween displays, right? It's, like, it's almost like we all as a community discovered this together at Connections last year. Uh, and I was just really, really thrilled that uh, you remembered something from Connections. So for those of you who sent me those pictures, thank you. Uh, it, it was really, really great. But this year, we're going to focus on something that I actually think is more critical to our community, the offering strategy. Why? Because this is the moment of truth. This is when somebody has found you, and they want to know if what you have is right for them. This is where they make a commitment, sometimes a long-term commitment to you. And when people make that decision, you want to make it super easy. You want to make it a no-brainer. So how do we do that? Well, you came to a technical conference. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of biology here. And you know, last night, I stayed at the Wynn, not a Holiday Inn, so hang with me. I'm going to try my best. But the amygdala is a really interesting part of your brain, right? Um, it's you know, part of your limbic system. It controls emotion and, more importantly, behavior, right? And we've studied this for over a century, right? And there's all kinds of research on behavior and what drives it in decision making. And I know all of us here, you know, we have a lot of very data-driven people, engineers, right? And we all think, oh, we make a buying decision, we look at the facts, we study the data, we look at the features, we make a price comparison, and we make a very rational decision. The truth is, we don't. Right? If you look at the research that's out there, it basically says our decisions are driven by emotion. So uh, Gerald Zaltman wrote this book, one of the people who've um, you know, really, really looked at this. And, and basically what he summarized was 90 to 95% of our decisions are made based on emotion. Right? That's what the behavioral research says. But here's the really fascinating part. We've evolved, we're so smart, what do we do? We then go compile all the facts in our head to justify that decision. So we're convinced at the end of the day that, oh, that was a super rational decision. But that's because we came to that conclusion 
after our motion had already made the decision for us. It's an incredible, incredible phenomenon. By the way, the word amygdala hijack, that was actually coined by Daniel Gelman in his term. That's actually, if you've heard anything about this, you probably heard the term amygdala hijack. And the reason it's called that is because that's what the amygdala does. It actually formed as part of the system that helped us with fight or flight as we were you know, you know, coming through and evolving. And when it hijacks the system, it does that before your logical prefrontal cortex is even getting engaged. So I wanna share a little bit of an example of how this works. I apologize, I didn't do my yoga last night. Ugh. So, basketball sneaker. So this is a Converse Chuck Taylor. Now, our crack agency decision council told me that this would show up better than the one that I liked when I played basketball in junior high school. This is Laker yellow, I grew up in New England, I had Celtic green, right? Why? Well, because I wanted to be like Larry Bird, right? Now the rational part of my brain, even at 12 years old, told me, you're probably not gonna be Larry Bird, right? Well, first of all, my father was my height, so that should have been a sign, however, I wanted to be like Larry, right? And here's the really interesting thing. When we buy products and services, we're not buying a product or service. We're trying to buy a better version of ourself. That's fundamentally what we're doing. We want to find someone or something that's going to make us do things better and be better at what is important to us. And that's what I was doing. Now let's fast forward to today. Right, ah, there we go. So, here's a nice new modern sneaker, right? That one, not a lot of support, very flimsy. This one, this is an $83 New Balance Kawhi, right? Space age polymers, all kinds of support, amazing, right? Is as good as any basketball shoe on the market. It's really phenomenal, right? So what's this one? Okay, this one is the LeBron. The LeBron, LeBron 20, right? Probably made in the same factory as that one, right? The number one selling basketball shoe retails for $225. No better than that one. And by the way, Kawhi, he's pretty good, but he's not the king. I want to be like, this isn't even a good looking shoe, right? <laughs> if I wore this, my kids, oh my God, they would kill me, right? But even though most people who buy basketball sneakers know they're not gonna be LeBron, they would really like to be like LeBron. So, this really gets interesting when you look at this one. This is the Air Jordan OG1 that you can have for the great price of $52,000. Now, I wanted to bring one here, but Michael told me I couldn't expense it. <laughs> College tuition, basketball shoe, right? When people see this, they're not making a rational decision. This one's pretty clear. But this actually plays into the decisions that people make about everything, every day including your service, right? But what do we, for the most part, present to our customers? Speed and price. I call it bits per dollar. And as Michael showed yesterday, most people, probably north of 90%, have no idea what this even means, let alone understand how it's relevant to their life and what they're trying to do. So we have an opportunity. One thing that became very, very clear through the pandemic is that your service is an essential service. But the other thing that I noticed is people actually started defining themselves by the way they use your service. I'm a streamer, I'm a gamer. I work from home, that's a huge part of my life. 
I'm a small business owner who wants to have a connected service, but as Michael said, I don't have an IT department. I want to have this great service, but I don't understand network security and PCI compliance and multi-networks, right? Or a head of household. So as a parent, I can tell you what keeps me up at night. I have three teenage daughters, right? So what keeps me up at night is they're all bringing devices into the home and there's all this virus and malware out there and I don't understand it, but I'd really like to keep my family safe. Oh, by the way, there's all this terrible content on the internet. How do I make sure they don't get exposed to it? And by the way, I'm all too familiar with the scourge of teenage suicide, cyberbullying. I don't want to go through my kids' you know, social media posts every night, but I'd love to get an alert that tells me there's a problem, and I don't want my kid to suffer in silence. And by the way, at 3 a.m., when I hear a noise at the back door, I'd like to know, is that a raccoon or an intruder? And I would love to not get up and have to go open the door to find out. By the way, where I live, it's typically a bear. Literally, last summer, five nights a week, there was a bear on my front patio. So anyway, and my wife and I actually go through the Arlo videos to go find that. It's, it's fascinating. But here's the point. One thing that I don't wake up at the night worrying about is, how do I go get a gig? Probably surprises you, you know, but, but I don't, right? But here's the fascinating thing. We all have solutions that can solve the problem of the head of household, right? And here's how important that is. We had a, we had a customer who put a, a, a parent head of household type plan in the market, and they actually you know, shifted it from a basic plan to that, charged a little bit more, and they said, ah, it's amazing how many people bought that new offer. And I was like, yes, well, guess who buys broadband? A lot of times, it's someone who's a head of household, right? So what if we tried something like this? I call it the guardian plan, right? And you put it out there, and the first thing you did is actually described why it's relevant and what it's gonna do for me, right? And I'm gonna read this. Parenting is hard, and the internet doesn't come with a safety manual. Let us help. Our guardian plan is designed to keep your kids safe and your family secure. It's amazing how many of us don't even put a description on why this offer is relevant. I see that, my amygdala is going woo, 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 right, you know, bye, bye, bye. But then let's take it further. Let's start with just the basic capabilities. And it's amazing how many people, when someone comes to buy, you don't even mention these things. So the first thing is optimized installation. So many of you have this white glove installation experience where you're gonna come in and make it work and I'm gonna have to worry about my kids complaining because they can't get Wi-Fi in the basement or they can't get Wi-Fi on the back patio. Secure managed Wi-Fi, you're gonna manage it. I don't understand how this stuff works, but you're gonna manage it and you're gonna be proactive. You're gonna fix problems before my kids tell me it's a problem. And they will, trust me, right? You probably experienced it. Worry-free support, when there's a problem, I'm not gonna spend 30 minutes on the phone get connected to someone on a call center, probably on the other side of the world. They're gonna walk me through this checklist, right? I had this experience recently. Branch fell, disconnected the connection to my home, called. Unfortunately, I have a legacy giant where I live in the woods. That's all I could get. And they finally started walking me through the checklist. And I'm like, no, no, I can see the branch. I don't need to plug my, my, my gateway in and out, right? You know, but you're gonna take care of that. And then of course, you're gonna offer me this amazing mobile app. And with this mobile app, I can take control, I can understand what's happening in the house. It's gonna tell me when there's a new device connected. Here's an interesting one. Hey, why are there 24 new devices in my home? My kid must be having a party, right? Boy, I can be a better parent, huh? So, you layer on top of that the value-added services like home network security. And Michael Winchick made this point yesterday. It's just not, not just home network security. It's recognized by the leading experts in security with awards, right? 
Got the great parental control app so I can make sure that devices get turned off when I want them turned off, can't access applications, certain websites, cyberbullying, and guess what? I can go into the camera, look at my Arlo, and go, hey, yeah, that was a bear, right? I'm, by the way, I'm not going outside. So the point is, this is what you can offer. And this is what's going to get, as a, as a parent, this is what's going to get my amygdala going. That's going to be driving my decision making. Like I said, I don't know what a gig is, but this sounds, sounds pretty darn good, right? And the beautiful thing is, if you look at all the solutions that I've talked about, you have things that can very easily allow you to build offerings that speak to people based on what's important to them. And I'll just use one, right? Working from home. Most of us have had this experience. You're on a really important phone call, and the Zoom meeting goes down, and you're embarrassed, and you can't figure out what's going on, and it's disruptive to all your coworkers. Hey, where's Matt? Like, you know, he was on the call. We're all here, right? Well, with home office IQ, if it's a storm, another problem, it's going to stay up. And with experience IQ, I can prioritize your laptop for you. So when your kids come home and they start streaming, your Zoom meeting won't freeze, right? So where I live, I don't have great broadband. The one benefit is that is I knew every single day when my kids got home from school. Because everyone on the Zoom call would say, hey, Matt, we're having trouble hearing you, right? They get on their phone, they start streaming, and poof, right? And of course, for the small business owner, don't worry, we got you covered. Everything that you need for your small business in a simple package, out of the box, we're going to take care of you. We're not just going to give you a gig, we're going to do all these great things. So, you know, we have that ability. And it's not just theory, it really works. And I want to share an example. Uh, so last year we talked about the liquid consumable category. This year, since we're in Vegas, I'm going to talk about a different one. I think we're all over 21 here, so what I'm going to talk about is bourbon. And I think that's something that many of you like more than even water. And how do I know? Because I'm the one who gets the bar bill at the end of Connections, <laughs> right? Right. And you like water, it's fine but you really like bourbon. <laughs> so I thought this example, let's go with that to illustrate how this works. So I'm gonna talk about Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace, yeah, I heard a couple claps, there you go. Buffalo Trace is an incredibly successful company. In fact, they're one of the oldest companies in the United States, actually founded before the Revolutionary War, right? And what they've done is use an offering strategy to make their business grow and thrive. And they looked at their market segments, and they have many, and I'm going to highlight three. So the first one is, you know, the drinker who wants to go to a bar on a Friday night, have a good drink with their friends, they don't want the well bourbon, they want something really good, and they want it at a good value. Then there's another segment, let's say, you're going back to your alma mater, and it's homecoming, and you're at a tailgate, and you want to bring something that's a little more special, right? Show your friends how successful you are. No, 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 how much you appreciate them, right? And then, of course, this one over here. I don't get invited to these parties for some reason, but, you know, they, they want to invite people into their parlor, right? That clock probably costs more than my house, right? And, and they want to have an experience like it's a wine tasting. And they want to show everyone how sophisticated they are, right? That's the positive way of saying it. But you get the idea, right? So what did they do at Buffalo Trace? You got Buffalo Trace, a great bourbon, $26, a really good value. Blanton's. By the way, if it's a Kentucky Derby party, you even got the little horsey on it, right? I love that. By the way, I remember when you can get this for 40 bucks. Now it's 162. And then, of course, for the more sophisticated palate, you've got old Rip Van Winkle, 10 years, right? Really impressive. By the way, they even have this. $6,000 if you happen to fancy yourself as the most interesting man in Kentucky, <laughs> right? 
And by the way, here's what's really interesting. He's by himself, right? <laughs> yeah, by the way, if my bourbon cost me $300 a glass, I'd probably drink by myself too, right? Right, so this, this is their strategy, right? But no offering strategy is perfect, but if you have a platform, it's easy to adapt. So they've got a great strategy, but they're, they're missing some opportunities. One that I think they should be going after is this one, right? <laughs> Social fitness, right? You run your 5K and then you all drink your way back to the starting line, right? And by the way, this actually is serious. Have any of you seen an ad for this company, right? Michelob Ultra, you watch their ads, you, you would think it was a fitness drink, right? Muscular people all glistening with sweat, you know, drinking after they worked out. Although I will admit after a run, it's probably easier to put down a, a bottle of Mick Ultra than a couple of glasses of bourbon, but it's an opportunity. And if they want to go after that market, it's very easy, why? because they have a platform. There are well over 100 whiskey labels, bourbon whiskey labels in Kentucky. There's only 10 commercial distilleries. And they use the same process. Buffalo Trace actually has 15 labels. And every single one of them uses the same process, the same materials. They you know, modify a few things, maybe the composition of the barrel, how much rye they put in versus weed, et cetera. And so this process allows them to produce 15 different labels with the same IP. And then they can go create an offering very easily. By the way, here's the fascinating part. Low end, $3, high end, $50. Because it's an efficient platform. By the way, don't share this with the most interesting man from Kentucky. He would probably be crushed when he realized what he was paying for something and what the cost to produce it was. But you get the idea, right? Which is, I have a process, I have a set of capabilities, I turn that around and figure out what is drying, driving the buying behavior for the people I want to serve and how do I make it interesting to them, right? How do I get that old amygdala, amygdala I'm probably pronouncing it right, wrong five times, uh, really firing. And this is the case across industries, like take cosmetics, L'Oreal, right? Maybelline Cosmetics, five, ten dollars Lancome, three, four hundred. Same materials, same ingredients. You know, Marriott and hotels, I mean, it seems like every day they have a new brand of hotels, right? Dozens. From the very low end, which says you're gonna get a nice clean bed, comfortable room, you can, you can believe in that quality, all the way up to things like the Ritz-Carlton. Right? And then Microsoft, famous for it, they got their you know, business package, their personal package, their educational package. It's the same software, right? And they tweak it, they repackage it, they create an offering, and they go to market, and they're incredibly successful. But here's the good news. This isn't just theory for our industry. Some of the giants of this community are already doing it. Highline. When they rolled out their new persona offering strategy in six months, they tripled their target for new subscriber acquisition. And the bonus was the ARPU for those new subscribers was 16% higher than it was with people who were on their old services. Sound pretty good? Cialtel, they made this switch, and I, I love this one. The I have teenagers package, I need that one, right? They're up to 70% take rate, and their goal is to get to 90. And United Fiber, right, so right after this meeting, really, actually at the meeting, Darren Farnham, who you saw yesterday, he came up and he said, Matt, yeah, you guys are absolutely right. Like, hey, I'm going in this new market, St. Joe's. I just saw an announcement, one of my competitors announced that they're gonna be going with, with gig and multi-gig services. Their price is unbelievable. And I said, okay, let's try something different, right? And amazingly, in a month, they launched a new program. The program basically said this, hey, we have incredible, reliable networks, fastest speeds on the market, but we're gonna do so much more for you, right? We're gonna give you an incredible mobile app experience. We're gonna give you home network security. We're gonna give you content control to protect your families and more. 
right? And now, and that, by the way, that was six months before they turned anyone on, which is why I asked Tom that question, right? You're going into a market, you have to think about how you're going there and how you differentiate. And every month when I talk to Darren, I swear this, this is the conversation. Hey Matt, we had another record month for new subscriber turnouts, right? August, they broke 1,000, right, in a month. It's because they're doing this, right? You know, I call that the ultra-connected package, right? That, but the point is, you're speaking to the needs of the buyer and you're telling them what's really special about what you're doing. But the great news is, we can help. So, you heard me talk about the electronic content builder and the market activation program. All the Jared EVs in it, Jared e video, videos are in there, but so are these templates, right? We have content that you can use to quickly and easily do this, put it into your go-to-market, put it on your website, and the team's here to help. All of our go-to-market partners, they have access to this. They can do it for you. But the really, really great thing is, when you do this, you're definitely gonna look different than your competition, right? And that's a start. That's a start, and this is not that hard. It's not like going and wrangling with government agencies for right-of-ways or funding. It's not like you know, planning a new network or transforming your operations. This is really just sitting down with your team and saying, okay, we have to really think about what it is that we do, what's special, and how we craft some offerings that, so we can start putting that in front of people. And the best news is we want to get into the boat and row with you, right? So our next guest, if I can ever get the slide to come up. Well, it's John DeRocher. He's our new chief customer officer, and he's gonna talk to you about how we are realigning ourselves to help you do things like this, because we think it's the most critical thing for the future. Thank you.